Hello and welcome to A Little Crafting. My name is Annie and I am recording this from Surrey in the UK. Um, this is my bi-weekly podcast where I talk about everything that I've been making over the last couple of weeks. That usually consists of knitting but sometimes other things as well like weaving and hand dyeing yarn. Um, you can find me on Instagram as a underscore little underscore crafting or on Ravelry as Ankiwoo if you choose to follow me on social media for various little updates of things that I've been making. Um, and today is the 16th of May 2021 um, and it is a miserable wet afternoon here in Surrey so um, I've got the light on for recording today because there's no sunshine whatsoever. Um, it's been a bit all over the place the weather recently usually a bit of sunshine and then tipping it down with the rain the next minute so typical British weather and um, hopefully it will improve closer to the summer and we can actually do a bit more outside. Um, so <laughs> let's get started with the actual content. Um, so I am not wearing a sweater today. What I have opted to do is pop a shawl on. Um, so this is a triangular shawl and what I've done is just put it over my shoulders and then tied it round my back um, just below my waist. Um, and that just gives me basically a little bolero <laughs> type thing to keep my shoulders nice and warm. Um, I will show you the shawl itself in all its glory though. Um, so this pattern is Arol by Audrey Borrego um, and it is a gorgeous um, cabled centred triangular shawl which I was lucky enough to test knit for Audrey. She has the Yarn Flakes podcast in both French and English and I tend to watch her in French just to um, practice <laughs> my my French language. It really helps to listen to someone talk in French. Um, but I absolutely loved making this. Um, it's yeah, got this lovely cable panel down the centre and a little bit of lace detail and you start it from the top down. Um, so top to bottom and it's a really lovely big cosy shawl. Um, I knit this one in um, John Arban Harvest Hughes fingering um, and the colourway I used was woad and it's this really lovely blue. It actually comes out a bit more green than it's showing on screen so it's more of a tealy blue um, than a kind of pure navy blue. Um, so yeah I really like the shawl. I tend to actually wear it most of the time um, like this so as a little kind of shawlette and I'll wrap it around like a scarf almost um, so that you can see the detail at the bottom and then I've got these two bits and then if I'm really cold I'll wrap these around a bit more <laughs> so like this almost um, but yeah it's nice to have this lovely cable in the centre showing off so yeah but I'm not going to wear it like that now because my neck will get way way too hot whilst I'm recording um, so it's going back over the shoulders for the time being. There you go. Um, I really love this pattern. Like I said, I test knit it for her, but I think there weren't any issues whatsoever. Um, and yeah, it's a really nice big triangular shawl. It takes 200 grams of fingering weight yarn to knit, um, but most of it is actually garter except for the centre panel. So really nice and um, relaxing, but with a little bit of interest with the cables. Um, need to wear my hair as well, there we go. Um, so let's move on to what I've been working on the last couple of weeks. And first up is finished objects. So my first finished object you will have seen in the last podcast if um, you watched that. So this is the March hat by Megan Brabin and this is what it looks like. So it's got this really lovely kind of diamond detail done in knits and pearls. Um, it creates this really lovely texture. Once again I have knit the hat absolutely huge. So um, it 
will be too big for me <laughs> but it is for someone else as part of my 52 weeks of hats challenge so I will be donating this as well as the others that I make to charity at the end of the year um the March hat is by Megan Brabin and it is part of the year of hats free collection by um Kelvin Woolens so you can find those on Ravelry um and also on the Kelvin Woolens website um, I knit it out of some leftovers of Durerum Natura Gilead, which is my favourite yarn, and I used these yarns to knit my mosaic cardigan. Um, so they were just left over from that, and I thought I would use them up for a hat as part of my yearly challenge. Um, so yeah, that's one hat done. Um, like I said last time, I am a bit behind, but I'm hoping to catch up maybe in the autumn <laughs> when I feel a bit more like knitting hats. Um, I do have a second one though this time, thankfully, <laughs> so I've done it, done another one. Um, and number two is the Rhinefleck hat by um, Judy Mergia, I think is how you to pronounce it. So this is not a free pattern, but it is about $1.50, so not really very expensive. Um, and it has this lovely kind of rib detail almost, so you've got a section um, on the front here which is ribbing kind of a uh, stockinette and then you've got a kind of seed stitch in between which makes it I guess the Rhine Fleck hat rather than the Rhinebeck hat um, so I imagine this was released around Rhinebeck Sheep and Wool Festival um, and this is knit in some stranded dye works castaway DK that I had left over um, I think this was one of those yarns where I bought it thinking it looked really lovely but actually this really bright yellow does not suit me very well at all um, so I opted to use this for something for someone else and I had some leftovers so there we go another hat done um, and I will have to count them up actually I have quite a big stack now um, but I, it's good going so far let's see how I get on by the end of the year um, I also know a couple of friends of mine are also going to be knitting some hats with leftovers so that we could have a, a big lot that will get sent um, to Hats for the Homeless, uh, which will be really nice. Uh, yeah, two hats done. <laughs> I have some finished objects this week, thankfully. Um, as uh, always, if you want to kind of see any of the things that I talked about I've put links in the description box below so feel free to click on those and have a look at the patterns that I am showing today and let's move on to works in progress so last time I was making my way through the body of my Ingalls sweater um, so I'll show you where I am now um, this is in my lovely bag from Antler and Acorn on Etsy um, I love this bag. I got it from my husband for Christmas. It's a really great sweater bag. It's got a lovely lion on the front and this jungle theme. And it has a nice leather strap so it's really easy to carry around. Um, so, um, I think I mentioned in the last podcast, but for those of you who won't have watched that, um, I had a bit of trouble with... Uh, the the kind of width of the sweater beneath the yoke um, so this part here when I tried it on it looked a bit too baggy and I think that's because in general when I'm knitting colour work my gauge tightens up so what I will tend to do in a colour work yoke is knit the colour work in a certain needle and then go down in needle size for the stockinette body um, I forgot to do that on this one um, I also <laughs> decided that I would trust the pattern and just do what it said um, but it turned out that, that was probably a bad idea so um, that's where I am at the moment and what I've had to do is undo all the way up to the bottom of the yoke and then start again on this uh, body section. Because I am knitting this in hand dyed yarn which is Madeleine Tosh DK Twist in the Red Woman colourway and then in the paper colourway I am doing helical knitting so that I don't get any kind of striping that's really obvious um, with the colour change in the change of yarns which does tend to happen with hand dyed yarn. Um, so it looks pretty good I think at the moment. Um, 
I think there is some variation that you can see on the screen, but actually um, in person it's not quite as bad. So yeah, there we go. Um, looking lovely. I am getting there with the body. I do get a little bit bored just doing plain stocking out though. So um, I can crack on whilst I'm doing something else. For example, when I'm on a call with my craft friends, um, but the rest of the time I tend to kind of pick it up, put it down a few minutes later. So hopefully it will be done soon. Just stock a net and the sleeves to go. So it's not exactly difficult knitting, but yeah, I do tend to get a little bit bored of that. Um, if you haven't tried helical knitting before and you're knitting stripes or a color work sweater, I recommend looking it up. It's um, really, really useful and it basically creates a seamless changeover. So what I do is I switch from using a yarn from one skein in one row and I switch to another one on the next row. Um, and normally if you do that, it will create a kind of line where you've joined up and switched over. So um, the helical knitting prevents that from happening. So there we are, that is where I am with my Ingalls sweater um, and that is a pattern by Caitlin Hunter um, which was fairly popular over the last couple of years I think um, but I am actually knitting the extra small um, to make sure that I don't have such a baggy sweater. I think the way that she styled it, it's quite loose um, and um, flowy whereas I want something a bit more fitted so um, that I can kind of wear it with jeans and it will look sort of like a normal yoked sweater. Um, and I have seen the comments on Ravelry that have said that generally it comes out quite large. So I thought I'd go for a size smaller than I normally would be. So there we go, hoping to have that done pretty soon so that I can wear it. Although um, by the time I have it done, it'll probably be summer and then I won't be wearing it until the autumn. But either way, it's been a nice knit so far and um, I'm definitely looking forward to the end result. The second thing that I've been making is something that I mentioned last week, um, and that was a, something I cast on last August, which is the Anchors Summer Shirt by Petite Knits. Um, so I started knitting this in August 2020, um, and it is knit out of Durerum Natura Antigon, which is a linen yarn, 100% linen, in the Pamplemousse colourway. Um, and this is how it's looking so far. So I think last time I showed it, which was two weeks ago, I was about here on the yoke. Um, so I have finished off the yoke section, which is in this lovely uh, kind of ribbed detail. Um, and I have started on the body. Um, so as it's a top, I think it should fit okay. I should probably try it on at some point. Um, but this is the sort of thing it will look like. Um, and hopefully very light and flowy because of the linen. Um, as I'm using linen to knit it, I have opted to use wooden needles. And that is because um, linen on metal needles is quite slippery so it makes my gauge incredibly loose which means that when I tried swatching with metal needles um, it became very gappy. So what I ended up doing was switching to some higher higher bamboo needles to knit a kind of tighter gauge um, more easily. Um, so that's something that I read up on online, I'll see if I can find the article again but um, basically it just seemed to be recommended that you knit something like linen with bamboo rather than metal. Um, so yeah, and that's turning out quite well. I will obviously need to wash it once it's finished and I think that will kind of even out some of the stitches that are still a bit wobbly um, because it is really difficult to make linen all even in the same way as you can with something that's a kind of forgiving woolen yarn. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure if you can see it is a bit wobbly, <laughs> um, but hopefully that won't matter. And the idea is that this will be a really good summer staple. I love this, wearing this type of colour in the summer. So I've got even more yarn in that kind of colour um, to make a little cardigan. And 
yeah I'm very much looking forward to having this done the pattern is lovely really straightforward um I loved doing the yoke because it, it's just knits and pearls and then some increases um what is interesting about this is that it's actually so it's a round yoke um at the start and then it's actually raglan underneath uh, before you split for the sleeves. So it's interesting to see those two styles of top down sweater um, worked together. Um, but I do like the idea. I don't actually have a raglan sweater for myself yet. So it'd be really nice to see how that looks on when I get closer to being done. Um, and yeah, so this bit is gonna be the sleeve. Uh, and then I've got the body here. I've only knit one row of the body, so <laughs> there's not much to show at the moment. But it's, once again, just going to be simple stockinette knitting in the round. And I'll probably get bored of it in the same way as I am with my sweater and need to have something to cleanse my palette in between <laughs> um, knitting that. So, yeah, going pretty well. I've used one 50 gram ball of Auntie Gone so far and I've got two more to finish it off. Um, but I imagine this will go quite quickly now and I don't know how much I'll end up needing but um, I probably figured it out when I first cast on um, and first bought the yarn so I'll trust that I have enough <laughs> based on that um, yeah going pretty well so far um, just to point out as well last week I recorded a little video on other summer tops that I'm going to knit and I will talk a bit about some yarn I bought for one of those later on um, but I recommend you go and watch that if you are interested in summer tops as it's such a weird concept actually to be knitting something summery um, I think we're so used to the mindset that you knit for the winter so you knit a woolly thing to keep you warm you don't knit something that's just a fashion piece or something light and airy for the summer season um so it's really nice to see so many designers picking up and actually creating patterns that are summery so i've talked through a few of those that i want to be making this summer um on that video so that is anchor's summer shirt And then the third thing that I've been working on over the last couple of weeks is my uh, ever-present Lightwood Cowl by Jennifer Steingass, which I am continually knitting occasionally um, as I go through the weeks. But this is definitely a slow kind of pick it up, put it down project. Um, so here's where I am at the moment. And the yarns I'm using are um, Fibre Company Cumbria Fingering, which is the dark grey. Well, sorry the light grey um, and Chopel Wool Starker 6 in the Chocolenden site colourway um, which is the kind of orangey red deep brown one that's, um, that makes up the colour work. Um, so I feel like I've done actually done quite a bit so far it's definitely going to be a lot longer than this I think. Um, if I take my needle keeper out I can show you a bit more of the colour work at the moment and drop my stitch marker so the last section of colour work actually really stands out nicely um, in the brighter kind of orange and red colours so I really like that um, but I do also I think I said a couple of podcasts ago that I really enjoy the kind of faded look as well of parts of it so like this section down here is quite a faded one um, so yeah, I'm happily carrying on with that. It is quite a mindless knit, but really nice to do some colour work as well, as I find that quite relaxing. Um, and it's a very satisfying result when you get this lovely colour work design in the end. So yeah, I'll just keep chugging on along with that. Um, I'm just thinking, I mean, I've still got quite a lot of the fingering weight yarn, the Cumbria fingering left. Um, I think that's probably going to be more than maybe half a ball maybe more um and i have another one so there's still quite a way for me to go if i want it to be a really long wrap around cowl um so i might not show it for a few weeks but we'll see <laughs> um i do enjoy knitting on it occasionally just as a break from the bigger projects And these needle keepers are great if you 
ever need to store your interchangeable needles whilst you're knitting on them. They do clang around a bit. <laughs> but this is a uh, Knit Pro, I think, needle protector. Um, and I, ha I need more of these, actually. I've got about six of them already. And I'm running out of places to put my needles whilst I'm knitting on projects. So um, I definitely need a couple more sets of those to keep things nice and tidy, stop them from poking through bags and such. Um, and I am keeping this in my Clara Rose Crafts Marauders Maps bag, which is great for this size project. Um, and again, I'll link to everything that I've talked about in the description below. Right, so that is all of the knitting that I've been doing over the last couple of weeks, but I have been doing some other crafts, of course. I mentioned last time that I had woven some fabric to make a bag from, um, and one of those bits of fabric is this one here, which is in a Nora George Yarns fingering weight yarn. Um, it is called Sunk Foil, I think, <laughs> in her Stellina base. Um, so I did this section, which was just with two, so the warp and the weft as the same yarn. And then with the other section that I used the end of a Beelum Yarns a gradient skein to finish off, I have made this gorgeous bag. Um, so you can see the fabric really nicely. Uh, it's got lovely sparkles in it and I love this kind of striping effect um, because of the fact that the speckles are coming out on the warp and not the weave or the weave and yeah the warp and not the weave um and i have attached a zip to the top um and i think this is also a really great size so it's quite a big bag um what i will do with the other piece of fabric is actually sew a smaller bag that will be the same as this but kind of be as a matching set uh, and this ultimately makes me want to weave with more hand dyed yarn <laughs> because I just think it looks so professional and just it's a lovely effect um, if you can see the woven effect on the outside and I've got yeah my gold zip on the top um, and this is for a friend of mine for her birthday that has now passed but I will pass these on the next time I see her when I finish the other one. Um, I got a new sewing machine recently so I am testing that out with the woven fabric and it's definitely working well. It's a heavy duty singer um, that was on sale during the Maybank holiday weekend here in the UK and I'm really getting on well with it. It's very fast <laughs> but um, also makes me less nervous about breaking my sewing machine by sewing woven fabric together with backing and all sorts that I need to use for a bag. So yeah I'm very happy to have finished this one, there's definitely more woven fabric in my future. I am resisting the urge a little bit to just grab a load of fingering weight skeins and um, weave a load of fabric to prepare for bags. Um, just because I, <laughs> I'll get a bit carried away and then I'll end up with a house full of bags again. Um, so <laughs> that's that's that. Um, I absolutely love these. I still need to make mine, um, but I ran out of interfacing. So I need to order some more before I can make any more. I've also got some fabric that I wove in the Chappelle Wall Crazy Zalba Ball um, that I will make a bag out of for myself. And in this lovely bag is some other stuff that I have been doing the last few days. So as you might expect, I have also been doing some yarn dyeing. Um, and I buy my yarn from yarnundyed.net um, and also dtcrafts.co.uk, I think it is. Um, the dyes are jacquard acid dyes that I buy from um, George Vale, who is a local online website. Um, and again, links below. Um, and I wanted to do a couple of different things. So um, the first one was just try out the teal. Um, and that one just looks really lovely. 
This is on 7525 um, merino nylon, so standard sock weight yarn. Um, let me see if I can get it to stop being so bright. Camera, nope, that's getting worse. So yeah, it's blowing out a bit, but it's a really lovely greeny teal colour. I know there's too much light. Um, and I really enjoy this, but I just wanted to try it out pretty much just make some yarn. Um, what's really interesting is that it's quite different to some of the other colours that I've dyed before that are similar. So for example, this one is turquoise um, and it's kind of quite a lot lighter and bluer. Um, and then this one's my Karadik B in blue, so it's way bluer than the teal colour. Um, so yeah, I did teal first of all. Second one that I did was actually supposed to be a grey yarn with some specks of teal and gold, um, but because of the way that I was dyeing it, I didn't take enough water out of the pot. Um, so it meant that the teal kind of went everywhere, which means that I've got this really light kind of minty green colour. Let's see if you can focus camera. There you go. But it is a lovely minty green colour. And then I do still have, as you can see, the speckles of gold and teal in there, which looks really nice. This is also on 75.25. And something else that I was doing was trying out some different colours, some very specific colours on some non-superwash yarns to see how they turned out. Um, so the first one was on the superwash looking like this um so this is Ivonagal green uh, which is named after my friend um so you can see it's quite vivid with some dark patches um and it's really really interesting to see how this turned out on non superwash yarn um and i'm not sure if it's the technique i was using because i tried ammonium something instead of citric acid this time um, but that is the difference between superwash and non superwash yarn given I got a bit impatient and ended up adding some more yarn to soak up some of this because I couldn't spend hours and hours waiting for it to soak into for the dye to soak in but that's how different that ends up um, yeah so I'm going to try another go um, with some different non superwash yarn and see if it makes a difference. Uh, then the other thing that I was going to do, which is similarly weird, um, so this is my gold colour and this is on, yeah, Stan and Merino, 100% Merino superwash. See how vibrant that is. And this is how it turned out on non superwash yarn. So quite light gold I would say almost beige to be honest the yellowy beige um so yeah very very different um and it's really interesting to see how much lighter the non superwash yarn ends up but still lovely um and because of that I also added a bit more yellow into the gold colour to see how that turned out so um, you can see that's the difference when I add a little bit of yellow. So I thought this one might actually be better for the sweater that I'm going to be making for my friend. Or oh, sorry, the yarn that I'm going to be making for the sweater that my friend is going to be knitting. <laughs> Not also making the sweater, Lou, just to warn you. Um, and then um, I stuck a non superwash skein into the teal as well. So this is definitely looking very, very light in the turquoise. Uh, but I think this actually makes a, a lovely little mini set. Um, and that's all four. The colours, I did do an extra green as well. So that makes all five of those really nice yarns. I will probably do some sort of colour work with these and actually use them up for something, even though they are test skeins. 
Um, so that was fun and interesting and I will have to continue my experimentation with non-superwash because I would really like to kind of stick to dyeing non-superwash yarns um, even though the colour really comes out in superwash just because um, obviously to make the yarn superwash they have to be treated with chemicals and such um, most of the time although I have seen somewhere that there is another way of doing it that is better for the environment um, but either way I'd like to continue experimenting with the super, the non superwash yarn and see what kind of colours I can get out. Um, and I did also stick some 15 gram mini skeins, some superwash ones in with the dye to try and finish it off because I didn't want to have to throw it down the sink. Um, and so I've also got these, so kind of a light yellow, darker yellow, um, turquoise which came from the teal and a very light green which came from the green um, so a lot more yarn <laughs> that I now have dyed in my house um, but I'm hoping to gradually get rid of those two friends or use them up myself um, so yeah and that was all being kept in my bag for the time being Uh, let's move on to acquisitions and I do actually have some this week um, so I'm going to lean over <laughs> um, and I placed an order with a yarn story in Bath um, which is a shop owned by Carmen who is a lovely uh, shop owner I've been in there a couple of times when I visited Bath um, but I do like to order from them as well because they have a really nice selection of things um, and one of those things that I ordered was the next Lane magazine issue 11 yes 11 so I now have 11 of these <laughs> magazines um, and I haven't actually had a look through it but I do really like to collect these and have them all um, one of the things that I really enjoy is that they also include um, recipes in here so in this one there's a really cool um, explanation of pasta making which look at that photo it looks awesome um and there's an aperol spritz there's marinated olives courgette um affogato and a pasta recipe in here which is really lovely um i need to have a proper look at the designs themselves though but yeah it's got to the point where i just tend to order <laughs> where when the new one comes out because I have to have all of them so I'm just adding the next one to my collection um but yeah I like the fact that they don't just stick to knitting patterns they also do other things and have different articles which are really interesting to read so I will sit down and read this at some point in the next couple of weeks um yeah they've got a little section on books um in here this time and of course the lovely patterns and uh, other things that they, the photography is just incredible. Um, yeah, so that. It's one of the things that really draws me to having the physical copies rather than just buying the patterns when I want to make them. Um, yeah, it's an amazing book. quite like the tree trellisser um sweater that looks really nice actually the kind of color work detail on the bottom in a neutral color anyway i will have a look at that another time um but of course i had to buy a little bit more than just the book so i ended up ordering some um bomulin by isiga um, and this one is colorway 61 which is like a denim blue um, so if I, you can see hopefully, there you go, um, and it is a cotton and linen blend, um, if I show you the label, so it is 65% cotton and 35% linen and in the colours, I don't know if you would have been able to see on the screen, but you can really see the two different strands um, in the yarn. And 
with this cotton I am going to make a tank top, the Pretty in Pleats by Andrea Yetman. Um, I did however realise that I only ordered two balls of this so I have um, ordered an extra one <laughs> from a yarn story because I will need more than two I think. Um, we'll see what happens. Um, but I wanted a kind of really light summer top and something like a tank top is great and I really love the Pretty in Pleats one because it's got pleats at the front that make it kind of sit really nicely um, rather than it just being a kind of standard tank. Um, so I will be knitting that at some point soon. I will have to finish both my sweater and my other top though before I start that. Um, so we'll see how I get on and how far into the spring and summer we actually are when I start this. Uh, one of my friends talked about maybe doing a knit along so I might actually start that as well and just do a summer top knit along maybe with a prize um, at the end of the summer. And finally I wanted to talk about the fact that I am going to be at Unravel Festival in person next weekend and that is in Farnham um, which is fairly near where I live um, so I do like to go every year. Normally it's in February and due to the pandemic it's been moved to next weekend so a May festival um, but my friend and I were so happy to, that it's going to be on. Um, so I will be there on Saturday morning from 10 um, and I think it's going to be much quieter than normal <laughs> um, because there will be kind of phased entry to limit the numbers in the event um, so I'll be going in at 10 a.m. Um, I, if any of you are there and happen to see me, please do say hello. Although obviously social distancing um, within that guideline, um, I will obviously be wearing a mask. I'm gonna have a mask with cacti on it, which I made myself last weekend. Um, and I don't know what I'll be wearing in terms of clothing yet. So I might end up wearing my Jupiter crop. We'll see. Um, but I'll try and get a bit of footage of the hauls and uh, the, the yarn and everything lovely that I see there. Um, this year it's also going to be an online festival so there'll be events and things going on throughout the weekend. Um, do have a look on the website if you are interested and so I'm very excited to, to be kind of taking part I guess in both the physical festival um, in person and also looking at the online offerings as well. Um, it's gonna be so nice to go to something that I'm excited about in person, see people, speak to people um, and talk about the loveliness of yarn um, and I expect I will have a good stash acquisition section to show you next time I record so um, I'll endeavour to do that over the weekend after I've been. Um, I don't know how much yarn I'm gonna be buying I am going to look for the more unusual yarns so things that might be a merino linen mix um anything that I really don't think I can um create in any way myself as I've started dyeing yarn at home I'm tempted not to buy superwash sock yarn um because I should be able to do my own thing and work out my own way of dyeing yarn rather than buying lots of other people's when I have quite a lot already. Um, so I'm going to be looking for things that I wouldn't normally see, um, things that might catch my eye, be a different blend, a different kind of um, yarn that I haven't used before um, and just see what happens. But yeah, definitely want to check out botanical yarns though. Her colours and yarn looks amazing. I love the fact that it's inspired by plants and nature. Um, so very tempted to visit that booth. Um, and I also know Hyde and Hammer will be there with some limited edition um, ice dyed bags. So I want to go and have a look but I'm not sure I can justify getting another um, project bag when I have so many and I'm not using some of them <laughs> we'll, we'll see but yeah I'll be there with a friend just going around getting all excited about the yarn um 
yeah and that is pretty much it um if you enjoyed this episode please don't forget to like and subscribe as that really helps me and i look forward to speaking to you in a couple of weeks i will let you know how i've been getting on with my projects um and i will do a stash acquisition podcast from unravel next week thanks for watching bye